This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Sunday, November 3rd. It was cool in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Homicide Division. The boss is Captain Hugh Brown. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. We received a call from the manager of an apartment house at 12206 Yeoman Avenue in central Los Angeles. The manager informed us that he'd found a dead body in apartment 3A. say she was 20 25 about that yeah looks like she put up quite a struggle somebody gave the room a good prowl didn't they yeah wearing gloves and her handbag there she must have been coming in or going out going out boys the victim was already bound and gagged when she was struck on the skull and your murder weapon was a piggy bank in the shape of a dog calvin lampy gentlemen I found the DB. I also managed this apartment house. Now, don't worry about me disturbing any physical evidence. I'll just stand here in the doorway. Now, may I see your IDs? Yes, yeah, sir. Sergeant Joe Friday, Homicide Division. This is Bill Gannon. Oh, uh, Sergeant, could I take a look at that badge? <laughs> Best looking shield in the US. May I help you? No, sir, we don't do it this way. You don't? Supposed to be regulation in a murder investigation. Not in this city. Is that a fact? Why did you open this apartment, Mr. Lampy? Two days ago, I gave that wall over there a coat of paint. I had to chip. Miss Jenkins told me to come in any time after 3 p.m. today. Said she was going out. That the victim's name, is it, sir? Jenkins? Mary Jenkins. Female, Caucasian. 25, single, 5'6", blonde, blue, about 120. What time did you open the apartment? 3.10 p.m. Called you at 3.12. Yes, sir. No doubt about it. That head wound was the last one she received in this world. Formed a fast clot, too, didn't it? Those ceramic fragments on top of the gag, see? A couple more there on the left shoulder. She was already down and most likely tied when they finished her off. Nice girl, too. Make you a bet there's not a single ceramic chip beneath the victim's body. That right. Also, she must have given him a good fight, judging from the appearance of this room. Sure gave it a good prowl. Wonder if somebody in the building didn't hear it. Maybe somebody did. No, sir, they did not. I checked them out. Mr. Lampy, you are aware that this is an official police investigation. It better be. Sir? I like that little girl. Almost like a daughter to me. This is one we gotta solve, men. We like to solve them all, Mr. Lampy. And if you'll just let us handle the police work, maybe we can accomplish that. Look at the way she's roped. Hogtied, they call that. The sash cord at the victim's wrist and around her ankles. Your killer could be a sailor, steeplejack, or more likely a cowboy. It's a cinch he knows ropes and rigging. You read a lot of detective stories, do you, Mr. Lampy? All my life. Nothing in the codes about that, is there? No, sir. Take that half-empty glass of water over there. Hypes get thirsty when they need a fix. Is that right? Then take a look at those perfume bottles, too. Mary would never leave them like that with the stoppers out. Might pay you boys to think about that. Yes, sir, we will. What else occurred to you, Mr. Lampy? Most natural thing in the world, my fingerprints. You know they're all over the place, and you know why. You paint, repair plumbing, wash windows. I'm the manager, Gammon, not the janitor. Painting, plumbing, electrical, no windows. I see. Your SID team's kind of slow, huh, Friday? Did you put in a call for a coroner and a photog? Mr. Lampy, let me ask you a question. Right ahead, son. How old are you, sir? 91 last August. No offense, sir, but you are old enough to know better. OK, Friday, I can take a hint. I'm leaving. I got here at 316, two minutes after I got the radio call. He wanted to know what took me so long. All right, you keep an eye on his apartment. Let me know if he starts to leave. Yes, sir. That's all we need, an old police buff. He sounds pretty sharp, doesn't he? Maybe a little too sharp. Strap. 
look out there. Too much wax. Even at that, I wish my wife kept house like your victim did. What does that give us now, Dave? Quite a bit, actually. Jack got some good lifts off the dresser drawers and one real good one off the water glass. Anything on the piggy bank? One good print, one smudged. We'd better clear. He's ready to spray. Gentlemen, if we're lucky in about 17 hours, we might have some nice purple pictures on that wall. Pretty girl, wasn't she? Yeah. You picking up anything, Jack? Just one second. Just like downtown. Not bad. Perfect, you mean? Yeah, if it's not the victims. I saved the nuts. Thanks, Glenn. What's your best guess? Liver temperature, post-mortem lividity, state of rigor. I'd say she's been dead a little over 24 hours, between 2 and 7 p.m. yesterday. Right, thanks. Joe. Did you talk to everybody? The ones I could find, yeah. This building's got 10 apartments, not counting this one and the old man's. Anybody see anything, hear anything? Guy in the apartment right off the street noticed a young girl sitting out front yesterday in a parked car. Good-looking girl, brown hair. Sat there about an hour. From when to when? 1.30 to 2.30. What kind of car? He doesn't remember. But he remembers the girl. Which it's a bachelor. Anything else? Woman in apartment 9B, Edna Wilson. What about her? She was gone yesterday, too, from about noon till 3. But she said a strange man's been hanging around the parking area last couple of days out back. Did you get a description? Pretty common. Could fit anybody. Anything else? According to witnesses, Mary Jenkins drove a 1965 GTO, beige with a white racing stripe. Couldn't come up with a plate number. Did you check the parking area? Yeah, and the witnesses were right. What do you mean? That stranger drove it off late yesterday. Two sets of keys, both for the GTO. Appear to be, yeah. Doesn't seem likely she loaned the car. She wouldn't have three sets. No. Maybe it was just clouded. Maybe not. Finance company record book here. According to this, she was four months behind in her payments. Could have been repoed. She was a dental assistant, member of a church group, out-of-state driver's license, Rogers, Arkansas, expired. California license, expires in two years. She's been out here a little over a year. What do you got there? It's a letter addressed to Mr. and Ms. Burke Jenkins, Rogers, Arkansas. It's unsealed. It's to her mother and father. Anything? Oh, the usual. Lonely girl in a strange city. Wait a minute. This might be something. What's that? I cannot seem to shake the feeling that something is going to happen to me, something that worries me. It's just a feeling, so maybe there's nothing to it. And she goes on about not wanting to worry her mother and father. Wait a minute. This might be a piece of daylight. There's this old man. His name is Calvin Lampy. Lampy's mentioned at the bottom of page one. Here's page three. Page two is missing. Anything connect up on page three? No, she just closes out the letter. Joe, Bill, I've printed everybody but the old man, Cal Lampy. All right, let's print him now. And after you roll him, hit this with some mag powder. Think we'll get a make? If you do, maybe we've got a suspect. 5.35 p.m. The crime lab photographer finished his job. So did the other man from SID. Mary Jenkins left apartment 3A for the last time. The old elimination process, known prints, mine, the neighbors, even yours, in case you happen to touch something in the murder room. Easy there, boy. What's the trouble? The trouble is you're getting too much ink on those fingers. I'm one man, you know, not a platoon. I've rolled a print or two, sir. How many of them were classifiable? A couple of things been bothering me, Friday. Is that so? Those perfume bottles in the murder room, from the position of the stoppers, I'd say they were removed before the bottles were knocked over. Like someone had pulled them out, smelled them, then dropped them. Mary wouldn't have done that in a month of Sundays. Too neat. Could put another woman in that apartment. That occurred to you by any chance? Yes, sir, it did. Mm -hmm. Something else, Friday, before I forget. Yes, sir. Did you ninhydra in that wall I painted the other day? Yes, sir, we did. Good man. By tomorrow, if anybody's touched that wall, it'll show up like a wart on the end of your nose. It's all right here. Murder in Malibu Cove, Chapter 9. Check. Good writer, that Earl Bemis. Explains the ninhydrin process so a five-year-old could understand it. What do you think you're doing? 
I'm trying to roll your fingerprints. Well, then roll them, boy. Roll the finger over gently, like this. Take a hinge at that. There's a fingerprint you can get a ridge count from. Pretty, isn't it? Beautiful. The victim's car is gone, you know. You got a theory on that, have you? Not theory, fact. Repo man drove it off. Go on. She bought the car secondhand seven months ago. Looked great, but it must have been in a bad smash-up. Frame was bent out of line. Dealer wouldn't fix it. I told her not to make the payments. So they repossessed it. 3.13 p.m. yesterday. Why didn't you mention this before? You didn't ask, Friday. Anything else we failed to ask? Yeah, what I was doing yesterday. All right, what were you doing? Played golf all day. Let me give you a tip, son. Pack a little solvent in that kit. Helps remove the ink from the fingers. Thanks. I'll be in the apartment. You boys got a theory on the time of death, have you? Not theory, fact. Post-mortem lividity. Your coroner's deputy should have given you the word. They did. Good for them. Anyway, I figure Mary was hit sometime yesterday afternoon, about the time I left the 17th tee. Only played 17 holes. I'll say between 2.30 and 3 p.m. Am I right? Close enough. You seem pretty familiar with all the aspects of this case, Mr. Lampy. You accusing me, Gannon? Maybe. If you do, remember to give him a rights. Oh, we'll remember. Remember that glass of water and those perfume bottles, too. I'll make book they're gonna figure in this case. Tell us about something else that figures in this case. Page two of a letter. Oh, you finally found that, did you? All but page two. Mary asked me to write a few lines to the folks back home, just to let her know she had a friend out here. Check. Check. Guess that's one letter that won't get mailed. You thought a lot of the Jenkins girl, did you? Uh, I don't get close to people, Friday. Not these days. Is that so? My age? Why bother? Tuesday, November 5th. The Nin Hydrant process had turned a palm print on the newly painted wall of the murder apartment. As Calvin Lampy would say, there's a print you could get a rich cow from. Yeah. And he ought to know. It's his. p.m. Dorman checked with latent prints. So far, Calvin Lampy's handprint on the wall was the only one they'd been able to match up. Anything on Lampy? Not in our files. He's clean. Sent his card to Washington for you. Maybe the FBI kickback will tell us something. Yeah. This morning, we printed every one we missed the other day. They're all clean as far as this apartment's concerned. What about unknowns? We've got three. Still trying to match them in our files. And you sent copies to Arkansas? The minute we finished eliminating. Just thought of another place you might have sent Lampy's prints. Yeah? Where's that? To London, 221 Baker Street. <laughs> 4.50 p.m., we figured we'd better have another talk with Calvin Lampy. Maybe he's taking a nap. Yeah, he might be playing golf. What's this, martini time already? We want to talk to you, Mr. Lampy. Good. I want to talk to you, too. Come on in, men. Pardon the junk, boys. Sit down, sit down, sit down. You keep yourself in pretty good shape, do you, Mr. Lampy? You mean good enough to commit murder? You boys still on the clock, or can I fix a couple of drinks? No, no thanks. thanks. I've been doing some more thinking, and frankly, I goofed. You did? No question about it. How's that? Just pulled it up last night. There's a jewelry case missing from the Jenkins apartment. Got to thinking about it after dinner. Small, black case, six by seven inches, three inches deep. Find that case, you've got your killer. Why bother to look for the case? How do you mean that, Friday? Well, now, the way it looks to me, we wait long enough, you'll tell us who the killer is and just where to pick him up. You got a point there, but let's pull together. We'll get there quicker. You told us you only played 17 holes on Saturday. Check. You'd like to know why. Check. Feet gave up. What time did you get home? 3.05 p.m. What about that repo man? You talk with him? The car's impounded. Good. Have your lab people give it a good going over. Never can tell. Might turn something. Like what? Like a clue, maybe. You've heard of clues, haven't you? I wouldn't exactly say you two are up to your navels in them. How long have you been in Los Angeles, Mr. Lampy? You've got my prints, Friday. A few hours from now, you'll have your FBI kickback. So let's not waste time. Let's concentrate on the case. What do you say, OK? Last night, I had a talk with Frank Whitson. He told you about the girl he saw parked out in front Saturday. Just a hunch, but I think she's important. Another thing, contact the victim's folks. Mary might have mentioned somebody in a letter home. Ought to be checked out. It will be. Good man. Now, what about that Ninhydrant wall? We found one palm print. 
Excellent. Were you able to identify it? We were. Who does it belong to? You. You're kidding. No, sir. <laughs> Let's see. I painted that wall Friday afternoon. When the devil could I have touched it after that? Saturday afternoon, maybe, about 3.05 p.m. Got it. Friday night, 8.15. Boy, how senile can a guy get? You were in that apartment Friday night, were you? 8.15. Mary wasn't home. Completely slipped my mind. And you touched the wall? You know any other way to tell about wet paint, Gannon? It was dry. I figured to give it a second coat the next day. Then I remembered I was going to tee off at 10 a.m. Saturday morning. I said, to heck with the paint job. Sure I can't interest you boys in a little smash? Martini, maybe? I'm about ready for one. You're working days. Almost five. You're off watch in three minutes. No, thanks. Forget it. I got a better idea. You have? Yes, sir. We got four problems here. You're not off watch. I don't like to drink alone. You're concerned about my palm print on that wall. And you better take my formal statement before your captain leans on you. What say we all take a ride downtown? What say? Six ten p.m. We arrived at Homicide Division with Calvin Lampy. Want to sit down there? Hey, mind if I smoke? No, go ahead. Care for one? No, thanks. Real nice station you people got here. Uh, sure, I can't interest you in one of these. I soak them in rum. No, thanks. Yes, sir. Real nice station you got here. One of the best in the country. You want to light that? Later, son. Joe, see you in a minute. I think he wants to tell you something, Friday. Yeah. Excuse me. Go right ahead, son. I got all the time in the world. What do you got? The FBI kickback on the old man. I was gonna leave it on your desk. I didn't know you were back. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't that frost you? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Not when I think about it. Sure did me, pal. How about those three unknowns? Did you make any of them yet? No, but that stuff in back east looks promising. Good. Keep at it, will you, Dave? Will do. Women, Gannon. Life's lonely little souls, poor things. Like the Jenkins girl. What's the matter, Friday? You don't look happy. Cal Lampy, you old warhorse. Hello, you. How's the boy? Keep your seat. I knew it. Couldn't have been anyone else in a million years. The minute I saw that kickback, I called Chicago and got the word. How have you been, Cal? Pretty fair, you. You're looking good. The Phillips case, my first extradition. You mean the Miller case? No, sir, Phillips. So you finally got your own command. Took a while, but I made it. This is the finest detective I ever knew. 44 years with the Chicago Police Department. Retired with the rank of deputy chief. I get the feeling I've missed something. Chicago PD. So this is your suspect in the Jenkins case, huh? Uh, no, sir, not really. Bill and I were beginning to think we were his. Is that so? <laughs> Homicide Friday. Yeah. You're sure, Dave? That's fine, good. Yeah, now all we have to do is dig him out. Right. Your print man, Dave Dorman, right? Yes, sir. We got word from Rogers, Arkansas. Good boy. They sent us a picture I'd like you to take a look at, Chief. What do you got? Former Arkansas neighbor of Mary Jenkins, two priors for robbery and assault. Been here about six months. Girl's parents told us on the phone that he'd seen Mary at least twice. We found prints for three unknowns in the dead girl's apartment. His were among them. They got a location on him? Yes, sir, Los Angeles. You got a name to go with that picture they sent you? Yes, sir, Cletus Martin. Doesn't ring a bell. But I'll tell you this, Friday. If I've seen him, I'll remember him. You got a make on his prints, huh? Yes, sir, we have. Where'd you lift him from? That piggy bank. <laughs> 7 p.m. We put Cletus Martin's photograph among a dozen mug shots. Chief Lampy picked it out immediately. There. That's the guy. So much for him. Now. You're working on my theory about that glass of water in the apartment, aren't you? We've given it some thought. Bet you my next month's retirement check, at least one of your killers is an addict. Want to bet, Gannon? How many do you figure were in on it? Three. One guy, two days. What makes you so sure? I'm not. Just a hunch. What's your average? On what? Your hunches. How many have really paid off? Listen, Gannon, before your fancy crime labs and whatnot, that's about all we had to go on. Righty? Yes, sir. Girl outside. You better talk to her. Where'd you get that, Hugh? Why? That's Mary Jenkins' jewelry case. The girl's name was Eve Wesson. She was a heroin addict. Her boyfriend was Cletus Martin. We gave her her rights. How long have you been shooting H, Miss Wesson? 
three years since I was 15. Is that why your boyfriend needed money to support you or to have it? No, sir. The other girl, Beverly Long. What about her? Her husband's in jail. We needed money to bail him out. How do you support your habit, Miss Wesson? I'm a prostitute. Go on, please. There's not much to tell. Mary Jenkins wouldn't give us the money. Said she didn't have any. When Beverly used her perfume, Mary got mad. Then Cletus got mad. He and Beverly started tearing up the apartment. Mary tried to stop him. Go ahead. She kept trying to stop him from tearing her place apart. Cletus said, OK, if you want to do it the hard way. And he threw Mary down on the floor. She started to scream, and he tied that gag in her mouth. He really cinched up on it. I felt sorry for her. All right, go on. Well, then he said, you'll be a good girl when I get through hog-tying you. And then he tied her up awful tight. Cleats real good with rope. She couldn't move an inch. I really felt sorry for her. What were you doing all this time? I was scared, and I needed a fix. I had a glass of water. Finally, I told Cleet I'd wait outside in the car. I couldn't stand watching Mary tied up and lying there. What time was that? 1.30, 2. I don't know. I waited outside a long time. Are you certain Mary Jenkins was alive when you left that apartment? I swear it, Sergeant. I stopped and looked. She was on the floor. She was trying to get loose. But Cleet really tied her up tight. She couldn't get away. Poor girl. I really felt sorry for her. Did Martin tell you he killed her? He said Mary wouldn't give him any money, so he killed her. He hit her with something just before he left the apartment. When Cleet told me that, I knew I should turn him in. Why? I'm a hype and a prostitute, Sergeant, but I want no part of murder. What does Martin do for a living? He's a cowboy, you know, in rodeos. What made you return the jewelry? Figured it might go easier on all of us if I did. The long woman and Martin will need their addresses. I'll give it to you. Cleet's apartment. They'll still be there. All right, now one last question. Why did Martin tell you he killed the Jenkins girl? When we got back to Cleet's place Saturday, him and Beverly and me, I asked Cleet what he did about Mary. I mean, did he and Beverly leave her all tied up and gagged like she was? I told Cleet the way he roped her up, she'd never get away. That I felt sorry for her. What did he say? He said, don't feel too sorry. She's dead. Seven fifty-five p.m. We were ready to go out and pick up Cletus Martin and Beverly Long. I'll run Calhoun. One last question, Chief. I didn't see a single plaque, citation, retirement certificate, or anything of the sort on your living room wall. How come? Sure, put that stuff out, and every Tom, Dick, and Harry comes along and wants you to play detective for him. I'm retired. I told you that, Gannon. Your memory's fading. <laughs> I guess you're right. Sure, you wouldn't like to come along, Chief. No thanks. You two go make your arrest. You solved it. Did we? Say, Kevin, that, that Phillips extradition case. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On January 23rd, trial was held in Department 184, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was found guilty of murder in the first degree and was sentenced to death. The suspect was found guilty of second degree murder. The suspect was found guilty of robbery and assault. <laughs>